I pretty much guess at things like this and sometimes they turn out well and other times they turn out not so great. Good afternoon. My name is Kendra and today I'm going to be finishing up my biggest embroidery order that I've had. I have five more designs to do. They're the smaller ones. I have the big back design that I've done on all of them and then I have just the infinity symbol on the front left chest for five more sweatshirts and that makes a total of 17. So if you watched my other videos, I said that the order was supposed to be 20 and it was going to be $700. Well, the client has decided that they only need 17. So it's still going to be $610. And then on Monday, in a few days, I'm going to be going and picking up canvas tote bags that she has. So I don't know how many that is, but if it's like 15, it'll be another $225 at least. I'm only partially done with this client's order, but at least the sweatshirts will be done. Those are due in one week, so I'm hoping to get them done now in case I have any issues with my machine or I need to buy anything. So yeah, let's go do that. one done out of five. So the stitching time is only three minutes. What I'm doing is I'm getting the next one ready but first I'm trimming like you saw me doing. I'm trimming the jump cuts on the design I did previously because I just kind of did them one after another and then trimmed the backing but I didn't go back and actually touch it up and make sure that no threads are loose on it. So I'm doing that now before I put it back in the machine for the final design because each sweatshirt has two. It has um, the big logo and then it has the, the little infinity symbol. So now I'm just going to cut the stabilizer off of this and then put it where the rest of them are that I've already totally finished. And then I'm just going to keep going. So that's my process and I only have four more and then I'll be done forever. So, see you later. While I'm cutting this, I thought I would just tell you some thoughts I have on this order overall. Now that I'm almost done, I have two more designs to do and then this one will be completed. Overall, it was pretty easy. I didn't have hardly any hiccups with the stitching out process or anything. The most difficult part actually was centering and making sure 
that my hoop was level on the back design. That was really difficult. I had some way of doing it though where I like used the edge of the table to make sure that my hoop was straight. Um, so that seemed to be the best. A few are like slightly crooked like I can tell but it's very minimal. They're not like horribly crooked like the first ones I've ever done are very bad. <laughs> so I don't think it's a big deal. It's just I know that I need to be more precise in the future. Because of the thread being white on both designs and it didn't require any like, switching out the threads, it was really simple. Once I have it all hooped and everything, I just press start on the machine and it just does it all. So I just wait. And then these little designs are only three minutes of stitching time. So it actually takes me longer to hoop it and to measure everything than it does for it to stitch. Hooping is just a pain no matter what. It's like the hardest part of embroidery, in my opinion. The placement just matters so much. Overall, I think this order was pretty easy. The design just being words and it all being white makes it really easy. Those are kind of my thoughts about it. stitching out. I just wanted to talk about this one that I did. This isn't for my toddler, but it's for someone else's toddler. Basically, it's like a funny church reference. Let us attend. I just wanted to talk about the design and like what I would do differently for the next one. So I only used one piece of stabilizer. That's the back. And um, my hoop, I thought I was going to be able to use a 5x7 hoop for this and it's like the entire width of the shirt so I wasn't able to hoop it and then pull the shirt back for it to be put onto the machine so I had to use a 4x4 hoop and my 4x4 hoop isn't working right like the, the part that twists, it doesn't keep tight so I did my best. I think that contributed to the puckering that's happening on it. So I just need to get a new hoop, I think, and doing this order would have been a lot easier with another set of hoops so I could be hooping while one was already in the machine. I could have been doing that a little faster. So I think for my next big order, I'm gonna be ordering more hoops just to make it all easier. And then if I ever have a hoop that breaks, I have a backup. I've heard before that you need to always be using at least three different types of stabilizer. I've heard it before that you need to use a stabilizer as thick as the material you're working on. And I've heard that you're not supposed to use tear away on anything you wear, which I think is accurate. But for something like this, if I use two pieces of stabilizer, I use two pieces of stabilizer for my sweatshirts so why would i use two pieces for something like so thin but then also it's like it's so thin so does it need more than one piece if you have any ideas to help me you can let me know that would be nice i kind of just guess i pretty much guess at things like this and sometimes they turn out well and other times they turn out not so great this one was like okay like it still stitched really well but it did pucker but i think it was because my hoop was bad i don't really think it was so much the stabilizer i just heard my machine stop which means that i'm pretty sure that i'm completely done with this order i'll show you some footage of everything that i've done i have half of it in one box and then the ones that i did today i need to fold and put in another box so i'll be delivering those in a few days to the lady for the for the ordering lady that ordered them and I will be giving them to her and saying to her that I'm done and to pay me. Yeah, I'll show you some footage of everything that I've done. This is half of them. 